Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and this week I'm uploading daily videos covering a range of topics. And today's topic is uh, what's the best platform to release your game on in 2020? Spoiler alert, uh, the answer is pretty much the same as 2019. Release it on as many platforms as possible. Let's, let's discuss after the intro. So I've been releasing commercial games since 2004, which was before iPhone, before smartphones became a thing. I was releasing games on Nokia's and Samsung and Sony Ericsson and all these ancient devices. And then I moved on to smartphones. I've released games on almost all type of platforms since PCs, Android TVs, the Ouya, which is pretty much an Android TV, but it's a different device. I have games on 3DS, PS Vita, now we have games on the Switch, uh, of course, on PC, Windows, Mac, Linux. I've even released games on certain devices that were used in airplanes or in cafes and restaurants and very specific devices. I've also released games on uh, Chrome OS, Firefox OS, Chromebooks. So in short, I've got some knowledge on releasing on a lot of platforms. So in my experience, um, releasing your games on as many platforms as possible really uh, helps you as an indie game developer to uh, keep paying the bills because every platform just is another opportunity to release your game or re-release your game and that's just a lot less work than having to create a completely new game so if you have a game try to release it on all the new hardware that's coming out and try to release it on different platforms it's just a lot less work to have it runnable on another device than it is to create a completely new game so it's just allows you to create more money with the same game. Now, of course, not all games are a good fit for all platforms. If you're uh, creating a game that's very heavily um, operated by using swipes and other stuff and really focused on mobile, it's gonna be difficult, not impossible, but difficult to release it on PC. You will actually have to put in a bunch of effort to make that work and also um, support with gamepad and controller. The upside of having gamepad and controller support is that you can also release on the Switch, uh, the Xbox, the PlayStation, all those consoles suddenly are also available. So most of the work will be in uh, the interface and in your input scheme. What are you using for the controls and how can a player move around? So that does mean in some of my games, I limited the amount of stuff a player can do because I also want it to be available on mobile and we don't want 100 button options on the screen as the interface and then the players to navigate all those so um, in some games I just limited the amount of options you could do at a certain stage in the game the upside of that is that I can actually use that game and sell it on a bunch of platforms from mobile to consoles and everything in between so that's something to take into account what are you planning to release your game on and can you modify it in such a way that it will work with all types of controllers and then of course there's the whole gaming experience um, if you're gonna create a game that has a very long experience like a very big story and a lot of stuff to do and much longer format then pc and console are probably your main markets so where pc and console gamers are really sitting behind these devices and are really focused on spending a bunch of time at these devices uh, mobile gamers are usually well you always have this one in your pocket you'll just grab it and you just want to play quickly put it away when you're done or when you're bored you pick it up or during commercial breaks because nobody watches commercial breaks I think or when you're on the toilet you're not taking a PC or console with you on the toilet except maybe a Nintendo switch I have never done that Anyway, there is a difference between how long your game is and the experience around it. But that doesn't mean that your game can't be released on all the platforms at once. It's just stuff you have to consider when designing a game and creating a game. All right, so that's all fine from a game design perspective. But what if we look at it from a business side perspective? Is there a platform that just simply generates a lot more money than any of the other platforms? In my experience, um, no. The only way a platform really generates a lot more than any other platform is when it's just a new platform. If you're one of the first games releasing on something new, that's pretty much something you really want. So if there's new hardware coming up in maybe one or two months and it just is looking for games, try to be one of the first games on that new platform. Doesn't even have to be a new platform, just a new hot gadget. Maybe uh, let's say Google is releasing like a console, a proper game console in a couple of months. 
I don't know, I don't think they will, but let's just say they will. Having your Android game amongst those games can be very nice because uh, people buying that hot new console, hot new, hot new hardware, they will want great games on it. And if there's just a couple of games there, chances are they're gonna buy your game because everybody with a new console is not gonna just sit around waiting for games to appear. They're gonna buy a bunch of games for their new console. So being the first on any type of hardware, that's usually the best place to be. But that's also a very unlikely for most of us because, well, you need to have contacts and you need to just be there. And I've been there a couple of times with devices in, in hospitals and restaurants and planes and that's just very walled garden. So there's not a lot of content, but I have like more than a dozen games available that I keep updating. So I was able to release my games on those type of platforms pretty quickly. And that just gives a good boost in revenue making from those games that have already existed for many years but are now available on another hardware. That's pretty much the best way to make money of all your games. Release it on new hardware as many times as possible. Having said that, uh, mobile has mostly been my main income revenue over all these years. But that's also been because I've been mostly focusing on mobile games and, and making them fun on mobile. And only started doing the PC versions of games in 2015, which was still a bit rough. My last couple of games did much better on PC and I'm slowly growing on that platform. And also focusing more on the PC and the console side because Mobile games is changing a lot and I notice revenue um, on premium games is taking a dip here and there. It's getting less and there are these subscription models. Apple has their own Apple Arcade subscription stuff. That's not gonna be a nice competition with premium games. If you can pay $5 a month for a huge collection of games in your subscription or have to pay $5 for that one single premium game, I would probably also pick the $5 for a bunch of games and it's gonna be very hard for game developers if these subscription models actually push through and if people actually get hooked by it and fall for it because I don't think it's a good idea at all. But uh, mobile has been, um, it's had been getting harder and harder to make money on premium games. Of course you can do free to play games on mobile but that requires a huge amount of extra skills that uh, many of us don't have. You need to track everything your player does, when your player does it, why does your player do it, at what time does your player do certain actions, and when is he sleeping, when he's... You have to follow everything from your players in order to push them to hopefully buy those in-app payments. And then you have to promote that game to everybody and then you're getting into a battle with million dollar companies that can do a lot more promotion and have superstars doing their uh, commercial breaks and whatever. So I still think free to play is very risky for small developers. You really need to know what you're doing there. So, um, my focus has been slowly moving more towards PC and console. All right, um, this was probably not the clearest answer or not the clear answer you wanted from this video. Um, well, unless you take the answer as uh, release on all the platforms available as the big answer because honestly in my experience even if your game doesn't do well on one platform being able to release it on a bunch of other platforms will eventually um, see that game make money for you so um, it's a great answer it just requires a lot of work when designing a game and developing a game you have to keep in mind the whole interface the whole control scheme um, and be flexible with whatever you use so that you can in the future update the game and push it to new hardware and that's really how I've been doing it for since 2004 so depending on when you're watching this video it's been more than 16 years and uh, so far it's mostly been working so those are my tips but um, that's it for today's video hope you liked it subscribe like comment below and um, See you tomorrow, another video tomorrow. Crazy week, daily videos. All right, see you tomorrow. I'm not really doing anything. I'm just turning around and then fade out, but that's, I'm not really doing anything. See you tomorrow.